hey guys so I'm back in another video and today we're gonna be taking a look at chromium OS or you could call it FIDE OS for the Raspberry Pi 4 Pi 400 or compute module 4 so it's compatible with all of those models and it should work without any problem so what got my attention on this that this build actually has a lot of updates in the last build had I had made a video a while back about this and the screen was really flickery and you just couldn't do much with it and I just couldn't recommend it as an operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4 but I can say after using this for a little bit now I can definitely recommend it as a daily operating system a little bit more than the more I would still say use Raspberry Pi OS because it's better but this one still is a really good option so I'm going to be talking about some of the cool features that I have found in this operating system and stuff that you can do so first off I'll show you guys where the download link is this will be linked in the description all you have to do is go over to this website and you download this image from their github page and flash it with etcher or raspberry pi imager but you see it's chromium os for the raspberry pi 4 3 3b plus 4b and pi 400 so it has all those things so we actually there's a lot of stuff that kind of does work on here we have functioning wi-fi but i am using ethernet because i, I get better performance and Bluetooth is fully functional. It works really well. You can connect a Bluetooth speaker if you want. Notifications, night light, which kind of dims your screen and takes away that blue light. So it just makes it better for your eyes. And then you can actually cast your whole screen to another device. Some Lee PSP video actually showed this in his overview of this video. So I'm not going to be showing that. You can watch that video if you haven't. I would definitely recommend it. So one thing, when you install this on your Raspberry Pi, it's not going to auto expand. So what that means is you're only going to have like 2 gigabytes free of storage. So how you fix that is there's actually a little thing in issues. So you go over to issues and it says right here storage amount incorrect. So you just click on that and right here it says you can do it manually. Try this command in shell or this one. So if you don't know what shell is, what you have to do on your keyboard, press Control Alt T, and it's gonna open up this thing that says Cross. Well, we want shell. So to open up shell, you type S H shell. You basically type shell. So Cross is just the web thing. Shell goes to your whole system. So it should open up straight up like this. And what you have to do to expand your system, I didn't try the first one because the second one looked good. So all I did was copy the second command right here. You just copy it I'm not gonna redo it because I already did it once but you just paste it in here you hit enter do a reboot and then you'll have all your storage available so it's actually a quick fix and you don't have to pr plug it into another Linux machine and expand it with gparted it's that easy you can just do it from shell so definitely do that if you do install this but now to talk about some let's try some web browsing performance because this is based off chromium so it would make sense so we have chromium i mean this is amazing web browser performance on the raspberry pi it's probably one of the best honestly like it just loads up straight up and you can have lots of tabs open and with that i have a gigabyte version with that eight gigs it's really nice and smooth to go through tabs and stuff I can search stuff it just loads right up I can click on it I can just do so much like this operating system is the really good web browser well it does it would make sense because it is based off a of web browser so now to test out some YouTube and I do want to mention right now I'm running this off 1080p I could lower it down to 720 but I want 1080 for now and performance seems really pretty good so I'm just gonna stick to that Let's try some YouTube performance, and I've heard that it, it's really good from other YouTubers and stuff, so let's see if it actually actually is that good. So here's Big Buck Bunny, and let's see how many FPS, I mean, uh, frame rates we're going to get. So right here, you click on settings, and right now it's on 720. I'm actually just going to up that right there to 1080, 60. And let's see if this thing can even handle that. If it can't, we'll lower it back to 720. Let's open up stats real fast. And let's see. Oh, okay. So. It 
keeps on getting stuck a little bit. It might be. Yeah, 1080 is a little still. It's a little hard. If we lower that thing to 720, it, it should be the smooth spot. Anyway, on any operating system along the Pi, seven like the Pi 4 can handle 720 really well. You see, I mean, it's running this thing awesome. So I would definitely recommend for YouTube, just stick with 720. I know 1080 does look a little better, but it's just not going to work as well on the Pi 4. 720 is good. So YouTube is pretty good. It's a really nice feature. Like I said, web browsing is amazing on here. And yeah, so right now I want to talk about something that I was so happy to see on here that I that wasn't on the other builds. This Linux beta. So what this does, this is on normal Chromebooks too, but it allows you to run and install some Linux software using the terminal. So how this works is it actually creates like a VM on your system with like this. So it is a bit slower than your system, obviously, because it's kind of virtualizing it which is understandable and it installs a Debian version on your Raspberry Pi 4 but so I just clicked on install and download the required files and then ran it basically so now let's go over there and test it but one thing to mention when you install that it, it installs a terminal for you in this file called Linux apps so we can open up our terminal it takes a minute to launch and then we have our Linux terminal here and you can do anything basically that you can on a normal Linux terminal so it's really useful to have on your system like I just said sudo update and you see it's going to the Debian file so I have some upgrades I can do but I don't need that right now but let's say I already installed NeoFetch so let's test it out like I said it's Debian we have the Debian logo and you can from here we can see that this is Arch 64, so we're running a 64-bit system, which is kind of cool. And we we have our kernel, our uptime packages, shell, resolution. So it's kind of cool to have this Linux terminal in here. Now to talk about the software side, what software did I install in here with Linux? Well, I tried some stuff, and I do gotta say some stuff works and some stuff doesn't. For example, I wanted to install Gparted to launch it. And then it just closes like that. So another thing I tried was to launch it from the terminal with sudo gparted. But you see it tries to launch it and then it just gives it error and stops. So not everything is going to work as it does on Raspberry Pi OS. And then some other stuff we could try out. I did install Firefox. So it's kind of funny to be running a different browser on a operating system that is based off Chromium. I mean this thing is nowhere as good as Chromium. I wouldn't really recommend you installing it. It's just for the fact that you can do it. That's why I did it, basically. But, I mean, if you're really a Chromium hater, th this can work. It's not as fast and smooth as Chromium whatsoever. But it is usable, and it is cool to see on here. I mean, there's no, re there's no reason to even, like, compare them because Chromium just destroys it in the performance. I have to say it's just like it's nowhere as good but it's cool to see this is a 64-bit Linux image or app on a Raspberry Pi 4 which is kind of cool so let's just close out of there for now and we can try something else do you want to close your tabs yes I do okay so it's a bit slow you see because it is like virtualizing it basically and then what else? I tried PyApps. That was just a total fail. That was just kind of to be funny and see if it would work. That doesn't work. So I was able to get Raspberry Pi Imager up and running on here. I was kind of surprised, honestly. So how did I do this? Because it's not in the repos. So you actually go to this website. I'll link it in the description. And you can download a ARM64 dev file for it. And then actually they also have this another thing. So it's in my download. You see it's the arm64.deb. You can actually just right click and install with Linux. So if you have any debs that you want to install, you can actually install it this easy with doing it like that. Another cool thing, when you install Linux, you get this folder in your system called Linux files. You can launch that and all your files that you're going to save and do stuff like that, it's going to save it into this folder called Linux files. So that, that was just kind of some 
stuff that I found out that's cool on this. Everything works. I mean, this version 1.5, the latest Raspberry Pi Imager. Another thing that I tried to get working, simple screen recorder. So you see, it does launch, and I mean, in, in my testings, it works pretty well, honestly. So this is a way to record your screen. It's just sudo apt install simple screen recorder, and bam, it works. So it's actually kind of fun to te play around with this thing and get see what stuff is working and what stuff is not. Like, I could install sudo apt install figlet. Which just like echoes what you're writing in big letters. But I mean, it just goes straight to the repos and it installs it. You see? I mean, it works. We have a Linux terminal on our Raspberry Pi running Chromium OS. It's just kind of a cool concept to see this working this well. And when you leave it, it's going to give you this warning and say, Are you sure that you want to leave? And I'm just going to say yes. But yeah. And another cool thing, let's test out some Discord performance because on the Pi, sometimes Discord can be pretty not not that good performance, honestly. Because Discord is kind of a heavy app and in the browser, it can be pretty sluggish. So let's see how this thing performs compared to like the Electron app that is available for Raspberry Pi OS and Pi apps. So like we can go over to PyTalk, my server. If you have any questions about the Raspberry Pi, feel free to join here. And this is me right here. And I will try to help you. And all my moderators will help you too. So just feel free to do it. So here we are. So I do see a bit lag. If I was to switch servers and go over to this server, for example. I mean, it's actually not that bad, honestly. But it is, it's usable. And another cool thing that you can do right here, click on these three dots, more tools, and create sh create shortcut. You can open it as a window, and then I'll just name it Discord. Click create. And now it's going to open us up with, uh, it's basically a web app of Discord that you're able to launch from here. See, we have Discord. So this is kind of how you can also make apps for anything you want. You can do it for YouTube, Telegram, WhatsApp Web, uh, Zoom. You can do all that stuff straight from here. Oh, I do want to mention Zoom. You, it, I actually tested out in my last Chromium OS video, but it should definitely be better on here. And it's really cool. So you just go over to Zoom's website. You just go over to Zoom. And what you're gonna do is, you can just go join a meeting. Or, oh, it was, we have to go over here to download. So we go back here and we go to download. And you click download and it opens up the Chrome Web Store. So that's another cool thing. You can get all these different Chrome extensions and Chrome apps on here that work really well. I mean, this same kind of features are available on Raspberry Pi OS, but I just actually, honestly, they tend to work better on here. So we should have Zoom right here. And now we have like a web app of Zoom where you can join all your meetings, do all your stuff. So I'm actually, honestly, I'm super happy with all these improvements in this Chromium OS build. I really love it. Honestly, this thing has improved so much. Before, when I used it on my Raspberry Pi, the screen would flicker a lot, and it was just not fun to use. You couldn't install those Linux apps, but now it's just went up in my operating systems list like so much. It's, it's honestly pretty cool. I would definitely recommend you installing it for you, good YouTube playback, awesome web browsing, and some cool Zoom going in zoom meetings and stuff it might be the superior operating system on the raspberry pi for those tasks and you can play around with the linux beta have some fun with it and yeah so if you have any questions about how i install this how i expanded my partition how i installed these linux apps or just anything about the raspberry pi feel free to
feel free to ask those in the comments or even join my discord server and ask me from there yeah so please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe